Hey everyone, so today I'm gonna make this video I've been wanting to make for a while. Um, I'm just gonna, I got my cousin's sled here that needs the carbs clean. It did run, but it didn't run well. And we're gonna get them all cleaned up, show you everything I know. Um, I'm gonna try to keep it short and not explain everything I know about carbs, but just show you everything I know about cleaning them and what you'll need to do to get that toy you're working on up and running that's been sitting for a long time and um, the main cause for your carbs getting dirty is not just dirt it's old fuel like sitting around um, especially if it's not premium it'll just get all green it'll gum up so we're gonna get this all cleaned out and show you what I do so this video will cover any Makuni or Kian carburetor for snowmobiles, dirt bikes, ATVs Pretty much anything. First thing you do is I unscrewed the slide, pulled it out, and the needle was all green. Right away that tells you the fuel in this bowl is going to be old, green, yucky, so going to need to be clean. But yeah, after you have it off, I'm going to remove these hoses and take these four bolts out and take the bowl off. The only tools you'll need is a set of flathead and Phillips screwdrivers and then um, a really small diameter flathead. Um, you might need a punch and then just a quarter inch socket. Alright, we got the float bowl off. As you can see, it's really green in here and it's all crusty in there. So how this works is as your fuel comes in, there's uh, these floats in there. And that'll push up on this, and when it gets to a certain point, it'll close this needle valve. Um, the fuel comes in down through there into the float bowl, fills it up. When it fills up, it'll stop. So it'll, uh, it'll stop the flow of fuel. Now if you notice, um, whatever you're working on runs okay, but all of a sudden, like I've noticed this on my dirt bikes mainly, it'll, you'll go to park it and it just dumps fuel on the ground. And that's because your needle valve is dirty and it won't, and it's not sealing. So all that excess fuel is just dumping out the vent in the carburetor. Um, also, if you have a rusty tank and or no fuel filter, um, debris will get in there and hang it up and it won't seal so it'll either run out the overflow or it'll run into your engine which can cause it to um, hydro lock. I had that happen on a snowmobile. Right here we got our main jet um, between about three quarter to full throttle this is where your fuel comes in through and so if anything around that throttle range it's not running right I would make sure there's no dirt chunks in here at all and you can see there's some chunks in here this one's definitely dirty so we're gonna be taking that apart so that's just a quarter inch and I'm just gonna take that out crack it loose all these jets these are called jets they have numbers on them and it's all based off of the size of that orifice through there you can see through so that's if you want to make changes to how much fuel it's getting. If you got to go richer or leaner, depending how it runs, but I think I'll save that for another video, but this just comes off. That we're just going to clean up. So next, we have to remove this pin, which holds the guide for the float. Now some floats, will this will all be one piece, the float will be right here. Um, you want to make sure to set your float level that when you set the carb down you want this to be level you can see it's a little low so it's gonna cut the fuel flow off sooner but if you have to adjust this you just have to uh, bend this you just have to bend this tab up or down all right next we're gonna be removing the pilot jet um, that's what you're going to need this small diameter uh, flathead screwdriver for. It's actually down in here, and you're going to just look in there, find it. On 
runs through that. Now the pilot jet has really small holes in it and the pilot jet is going to control the fuel between idle and about eighth throttle. There's some very small holes in here and it's pretty common for these to clog up and then it'll either make it hard to start, won't idle, um, a lot of issues. So you're going to want to make sure that's cleaned out after you drop it on the floor. It's gone forever. So to make adjustments between idle and a throttle, maybe a little bit more, this is your air screw. Now on a four stroke, it's a fuel screw. Two strokes, air screw, I always say lefty lean, righty rich. Um, that's because as you turn this screw in, it'll um, rich in the mixture. It'll actually, you're closing off how much air it's getting. As you loosen it, it's going to let in more air so you can get leaner. Um, usually it's between one and a half to one and a quarter turns out from the seated positions. You don't need to take this out when you clean the carb. You can just soak it how it is. But I always like to make sure there's no dirt in there. I mean, this carb is pretty dirty. Just write down where it's at right now so when you put this all back together, you can put it back to where it is now as a starting point. So just turn it in one half, one, one and a quarter turns. Right now it's seated. So that's about where it should be. Also, it's pretty common for an air screw to be on the air box side of the carburetor. Fuel screws are normally going to be in the front of the carburetor on the engine side. Um, some of them are even on the bottom of the carburetor. And there's normally a spring in here. On my four stroke, I know there's a o-ring that goes in there because um, on a four stroke if it sucks in air you'll have a lot of issues starting it that's what happened on my three-wheeler there's a washer spring and then o-ring um, I believe that's how it goes I'll throw up a picture here of how that would go if that's what you have on your application so these plastic fittings I've never been able to get them out those you can leave in there um, do the same thing with your idle screw. Now what this will do when your slide is in the carb, it'll raise and lower it, determining how much air gets in to your carbs. This is actually a twin carb engine. It's on a Skidoo 380. I noticed that it's pretty much pointing towards this, so if you can find anything on the carb where that points to, it'll help you later on. At the end of this video, I'm going to go over how to adjust more than one carburetor to get set up. You pretty much want to make sure all these screws are set evenly on both carbs. If you're putting it together, and, or if you're not taking it apart, like let's say you just have a bunch of carburetor pieces in a bucket or something you're putting together, what you can do is right when it's on the bench, have the slide all the way down, just have the screw all the way out, turn it in until you just barely see the slide move up, and set them evenly, and then go from there if you have to raise the idle or lower it you'll know once it's running all right next we're gonna remove this pin that holds the float fork I'll call it um, these can be a little tricky to get out I just use a punch there it goes so that comes out remove this all right so now there's this little clip. This is that needle valve that's going to let that fuel in to the bowl. And this spring helps if you ever, like let's just say you have a dirt bike. If you ever tip your dirt bike over, the needle's not going to fall out. And it, it's also going to help with bumps and stuff so that needle valve stays in there. I believe that's what it's for. So make sure, don't lose it, put it back in. I'm just going to pop that out. And now, so this is your needle valve. What you want to check for is if there's any any grooves in this tip, it means it's going to be worn out and it's not going to seal well. Um, these also have a little spring pin. Just want to make sure that moves in there. But usually the rubber tip needles, as long as they don't get all dried out, they I guess they last longer. They won't wear out compared to these. But this one looks good, so. 
gonna clean that up so now the carbs ready to be soaked you can submerge this whole thing carb cleaner and then after that we're gonna blow it out and make sure it's all cleaned out there is a little plastic o-ring in here you never want to leave rubber parts in carb cleaner cuz it'll dry them out they'll crack and they won't last but um, you can submerge it how it is with this little plastic o-ring in there you're not gonna hurt anything it's ready to be soaked what are you gonna do? Grab beer and take a swig. Grab, grab gonna be beer. To... You're gonna be here a while. Another tool you need is a bush light. As for the float bowl, I just took those little plastic caps off that keep the floats from falling out. So there are your floats. The only thing I know about floats is that they need to float. Some older ones are made of brass. You'll find them made of plastic. If they're cracked, they're not gonna float, and then. Your carburetor's just gonna overflow with gas and you're gonna burn your whole garage down first kick. <laughs> yeah, if they catch just, on fire like mine and they know your bolts, so Yeah, Travis Led caught on fire one time and it wasn't good. We put her out, but it was a little bit of electrical wiring work yeah, to fuel fix line, fuel lines. Yeah. So yeah, fuel overall, fuel leaks are not good. So yeah, you wanna make your floats float, man. I've seen older floats that are made of brass, like older motorcycle stuff, they're made of brass. And you can, if there's a pinhole in it, you can actually solder it and they work just fine. But So yeah, that's one thing to look out for. But we're going to scrape this old gasket off. In our parts washer, we're using mineral spirits. Um, at home, I have a bucket of Chem Dip carburetor cleaner, which works good. You can even blow it out with just spray it with brake clean and blow it out with air if it's not too dirty. I mean, sometimes I've taken carbs apart that are pretty clean, but really just the pilot jet or the main jet, some jets clogged, so you just spray it out, blow it with air, and put it back together, and it'll be running again. All right, I got the carbs clean pretty much as well as I can. You can see all this varnish. I mean, you can scrape at it with a screwdriver and it, I can't get it out. And it's like pretty much etched into the aluminum. So, I mean, if you had an ultrasonic cleaner, you could get it out or um, baking soda blaster, you could get it nice and clean. But to be honest, I don't think any of this is gonna harm anything. We got all the major crap out of the carb, so this will be fine. All right, so most of the time you can just clean these jets out, um, like you saw, but the guy I'm doing this for got all new, all new jets, new gaskets. I found out though the carbs originally had a 135 main jet, and the ones he got are 140s which is a little bit bigger, so I don't want it to run too rich. The sled's all stock, and so I just cleaned up the jets that came out of it, so I'm going to put them back in. Now, this is brass and aluminum, so you don't have to get it really tight. Just snug it up. That'll be good. Make sure this needle clip is in there. Next, we're going to install this uh, float fork, and if you don't remember which way it goes on, you'll see a dimple on one side. That's where the needle is kind of worn into it, so you know that part faces down, and then you put your pin through. This is where I take a pliers. Notice how the pin goes through a little bit and it gets stuck. Some carbs, you just got to squeeze that together. Perfect. Like I mentioned before, you want to make sure this is flat. So if you're looking at it this way, if you have this bent too far forward, it's going to cut fuel off too soon and under wide open throttle when you need all the fuel you can, um, it might start sputtering. So you can check that if you have that problem. If it's too low, it's not going to cut. The fuel is just going to keep on coming in. It's not going to close that valve. So it'll either um, run out the overflow or it can go up into the carb and seep into the cylinder. It's not good to have a fuel leak.
this one looks pretty flat so that's right where it should be pretty much parallel with this now we're going to install the main jet just going to put this little thing back on so yeah your main jet is going to control anywhere from three quarter to full throttle and no half throttle thing. I think it yeah, be it, half it might be, yeah, with Makunis, it might be a little, like, half throttle to full throttle. And a good way to tell if it's, it's the right size, you want to hold it wide open for, like, two to three seconds, and then just hit, hit the kill switch, check your plug, and then based off the color of the plug, you'll know if you're too rich or lean. Rich being too much fuel, lean being not enough fuel. We're going to grab a brand new Pilot Jet. Like I said before, this will control the fuel and air between idle and eighth throttle, maybe quarter throttle. Anything in between quarter throttle and three quarter throttle is going to be your needle. Your needle um, goes down into the slide and it, it pretty much goes right into the main jet. As you give it more gas, it opens up the main jet and then as you let off, it'll, as you close the throttle, it'll go down at the main jet and it's it's tapered so the more it comes up the bigger the more fuel flows past it and when it closes it's less fuel that's pretty much all your mid-range adjustments will be done by the needle you can adjust you can get different taper needles and you can get um, you can raise and lower the clip on the needle which adjusts how far it sits down into the main jet so if you put it on the top notch, usually there's like four or five notches. You put it on the top notch, it's going to lower the needle. You put it on the lower notch, lower to the end of the needle is going to raise it up. So that's pretty much all your adjustment. Now we're going to put the bowl on. This pin is going to be on the lower part of the bowl. And then the pins face each other. And these little tiny plastic caps go on. All right, and then what I do is line up this cutout with the back of this fork. Oh, you also want to install your new uh, bowl gasket. That's kind of important. That goes on there. Yep. All right, we're gonna put this uh, air screw back in. Don't forget your spring that I just looked for 10 minutes because it rolled away on me. Screw it in till it seats, and then I'm gonna back it out to one and a quarter turns, which is where it was at before I started. Now for the idle, this was at five and a quarter turns out, and it was kind of facing this way. But once I get these carbs, back into the sled with the slides in them. Um, I'm going to show you how to adjust your carburetors to synchronize your idle. So next we're just going to screw in this idle screw. Make sure the spring's on it, of course. The springs are on there for vibration so that they don't back out or screw in. Um, this was five and a quarter turns out from the seated position. On a single carb engine you're just gonna have to keep track of that and then get it close so that when you start it up your idle will be close because um, some things will be finicky with how much throttle you give it when you start it like some things will want more throttle some will want half choke full choke some will want no gas at all so your idle is um, pretty important with the startup but when you have more than one carb, you know, twin cylinders, three, even four cylinder motorcycles, <clears throat> you're going to want to have all these synced up um, so they're all the same. That's about all I can show you right now with the carburetor. I'm going to head home, install this. We're going to clean up the needles because they were all um, green and yucky. So I'm going to take them out, clean them, and then make sure both of the clips are at the same height. All right, we're back and uh, the snow's coming down pretty heavy. Really powdery stuff here, but this is the sled I'm working on. It's a 95 Skidoo Touring LE. So long track with electric start. This is a 380, but like I was saying earlier, so these are the slides covered in snow, you know. 
but they screw the screws into the carb but this is that needle right away I pulled these carbs out and as you can see this needles all green I'm just gonna wipe it down really it just rubs right off actually all right so a little trick that will help you get the carb inside the carb boot is I'm just gonna take a little oil and put it inside the boot here and a little bit around here try not to get any snow in the carbs it's actually freezing So when you go to line up this slide, this notch is going to be on the same side as your idle screw. And usually there's a pin that fits into this groove. Hook our primer lines back up. All right, the sled's just about ready to run. Um, my phone died, but I got it charged back up, and I got the hose clamps tight on the car boots. You want to make sure all these clamps are tight and that your intake boots aren't cracked. Um, and then I got the I put some gas in a bottle and a fuel line onto it, and I filled up each carburetor with gas just to help with starting it, so it'll start quicker off the first start you know there's no gas in the carbs everything is dry so I did that and then um, before I put the air box on um, I put it's kind of a weird way to do it it's not too accurate but it'll get you really close um I put a hose clamp around the throttle see okay so what I'm talking about is I got I know both of my idle screws are set exactly evenly between the two carburetors so it should idle good if you have to adjust it just make sure to adjust both screws evenly some carburetors twins threes four cylinders whatever all your linkages will be connected so that you can just adjust one screw and it'll adjust them all the same but these are separate the way to check that your throttle cables are pulling at the same time and the same amount what I did is I put a hose clamp around the throttle just to pull it back just enough to get it off idle and then you can take whatever you like and put it inside the carburetor and use it as a feeler gauge and make sure they're even. I'll show you what I'm talking about on another carburetor. I just took a screwdriver like this but this still has a slide that goes up and down just like the other carburetors and just get it so that it just slips in there and you can feel a little bit of drag and you want to make sure you know since this is round um, try to do it in the center and don't try not to do it at an angle up or down this way you know it's got to be repeatable so you can go from one side to the other and check it so if you need to make adjustments you can um, crack this nut loose and then um, to raise the slide up you would loosen this or to lower it you would tighten it and then jam it back down with this jam nut so that way you can get these carbs pretty close and then your throttle response should be as good as it can be another thing you can do is you can take the primer lines off and there'll be an inlet there you can hook up a vacuum gauge they make specific ones for carburetors if you have a regular vacuum gauge when this thing's running needles are gonna be bouncing so much if you get the proper gauges while it's running you'll be able to see which cylinder is pulling more vacuum and then you can adjust your throttle so that it's dead even and it should run amazing so all right enough talking I'm gonna fire this thing up see if it runs idle up a little bit but it's 
Sounds pretty good. Throttle response is good. guys thanks for watching hope you like this video I showed you told you pretty much everything I know about carburetors as far as two strokes um so yeah runs really good leave a comment if you like um let me know how like any experience you've had with rebuilding carburetors or uh, maybe I missed something I should have went through and I don't know uh runs good though and that's all I care about so thanks for watching